Our next talk is by Frederick, and it's about remote execution with BuildBarn. Yeah, let's see. Okay. Yeah, I'm Frederick Medley, working for a company called Marathon. We are consulting, helping companies set up a build barn and uh, and convert to use Spatial. So build barn in brief, it's a remote caching, remote execution system that's optimized for very large clusters. It was created 2018 by Ed Schouten and uh, it's free open source, has been adopted by uh, many multinational corporations. Um, so I will try to show you how it looks like if you uh, with the configuration, if you set it up. So let's start easy with, we have one, one storage place. We put uh, all the cache entries in that storage, uh, right to local disk and uh, the basal client connects to that. Pretty simple, but the storage gets full. So we need to shard. Um, then we add the front end uh, to put certain uh, cache or certain blobs in the different uh, disk uh, storages there. Um, that is based on the hash of the blob. So the front end knows exactly which shard to go to. Um, after this, or you can see also here to the left that um, all the configuration is written in JSONnet and all the documentation about these configurations are stored in the proto files in the repositories and they're also default values. And these are important to read because zero is not a good value to use, which happens if you don't mention anything in your configuration. Um, we also add redundancy, mirroring is a good one, and you see the configuration grows a bit. Now, uh, load balancing. If you have three storage nodes, maybe your front end can't cope with the load. So let's just add a, let's scale the stateless front end very easy in Kubernetes if you use that. Now, we have uh, multiple offices, so it's good to have an office cache to reduce latency. So let's have the central cluster somewhere in the cloud, and then let's add an office cluster with the front end and the local storage there. And then you get a read caching with a fast office storage and a slow central cluster connection. That's not really good if this local storage goes down. So therefore we add, we have a read caching and then we have a read canarying so to say that if the storage in your local office is broken, then just go to the central storage instead. It will add a bit of latency, but that's all right while the local storage is down. You can, of course, configure with mirroring in the office storage as well if you want, but it depends on your needs. Uh, on top of this, when you look for action results, so checking for a cache hit in Basel, uh, the get action result a message when you respond to that and say I have a cache hit then Basel expects that all the blobs are actually located and you can read them from the storage but we don't need to transfer all of the blobs when we do build without the bytes so therefore we add an existing existence caching part on the local disk so that we don't have to ask the central cluster if all these blobs exist all the time and that will speed up all the cache hit checks a lot. If you want even more caching, you can add BB Client D. That uh, there was a talk yesterday about a remote output service, and there you can add BB Client D on your own workstation. So when you build something from different workspaces on your own uh, machine, then you can use that local cache instead. Then we have the remote execution, of course. So let's add a scheduler and worker and runner process. The runner process is less privileged. It might not even have network access, which is good for some actions. Um, the worker is the one that is responsible for populating uh, the disk with all the input files. And then there's a single scheduler, and it is able to cope with very big clusters, even if it's a single process. If we get a failure, you probably want to know why. And in the Basel you, in CLI, you get a link. So you can click on that link, but then you need the browser, of course. Um, and so add that as well to your deployment. You might also want to log what has been executed. And 
uh, log that to your database. So connect uh, the action logger um, or use a completed action logging API to collect that data, put it in a database so you can search for, for example, very slow builds or reoccurring builds and what is the most costly computations that you do. And in your office, you might also have your own uh, hardware or something else, so you need to add workers there as well. Well, that's also possible to add and configure. And those can then talk to the office cluster front end so, uh, to get the data delivery to those local workers a bit quicker. For the error handling, Billbarn is uh, just pushing all the errors back to the Basel client. And there's a reason behind this. If, say, if a worker fails down at the bottom and a test, a long running test restarts, then you don't want to know that my test has been running for 20 minutes. Well, I expected it to finish after 12, and why is it now running for 20 minutes? Instead, the error is propagated back to base, so saying something failed. Well, you can decide if you want to retry or not. And, well, as any of these links in the whole graph here can fail. It can be the first connection to the front end, so it doesn't really, if we, re, if we do stuff again in the cluster, it doesn't help if the first link fails. So therefore, it's, we ship all the errors back to the Basel client so that you get informed of what is happening in the cluster, and, and Basel can take the decision, should I retry or not? Then there are some extra interesting features, like uh, I call it sticky scheduling. So if a worker has uh, done some invocation, the output files are available on that worker, then it's pretty smart if you can run the next action on that same worker, if there is a space available. So Billborn is trying to reschedule uh, all the actions in your invocation on the same worker, well, if there is space, otherwise it's uses it use more worker nodes. And uh, thereby, you get this locality of the storage, and it goes quicker. There's also a feature, sometimes some actions need extra memory or extra CPU. Well, if I put, I want 8 gigabytes of the RAM on my, 8 gigabytes of memory on my action, I will never reduce that again. I will never notice that I improved my action, and I now only need 2 gigabytes of RAM. So you will always just increase the need of resources if you put that in your build basal file. But Billbon instead automatically can find out in the cluster saying, well, these actions seem to fail on a small node, so let's run them on a bigger node. And thereby it automatically, it recalls what size of node it needs and then puts out the action on that size the next time it runs. Then we have file system handling. So on the worker, um, if you use the file uh, fuse or well virtual file system, either either fuse on uh, Linux or NFS on Mac OS, then Billbon will uh, serve the files when you need them on demand. That means that your action starts running immediately, but um, you load the files when you actually read them. There's even a function uh, where it logs what files you have accessed for a certain action. And uh, then the next time you run a similar action, it will start to prefetch all those files. And there's kind of a race between will your action need them before or they have been collected, or will you have to wait when they are getting populated for you? Uh, then we have monitoring, well, Prometheus, Grafana, boards, Open Telemetry, Jaeger, and then the completed action logger API, as I mentioned before, that you can uh, hook into. Some frequent questions we get in the Slack community is, why is my storage slow? The usual answer is, you are layering your storage some way. So, basically, if you have your remote cache on a network disk, that will be slow. Put it on your own, uh, where you run the cache. Put it on a local disk there, then it gets faster. And use a raw, raw block device and avoid layering VM on top of Docker or, or the other way around. 
avoid as many layers as possible, and then it will get fast. Uh, don't forget completeness checking on the action cache and existence caching on the content addressable storage. And for documentation, as I said in the beginning, look in the profiles. There are default values. They are really good. So in summary, um, Bilban is a free open source project available on GitHub. There's a Slack channel. Please use that. Professional services are available, not just by us. So look on, uh, in GitHub and see uh, who are available to support you in setting it up. Um, well, it's a very flexible microservice architecture, and it's built to scale. There are clusters I know about using uh, 100,000 uh, CPU, vCPUs, and um, well, use the components that you like. Connect it to other things like Pacer Remote or some other caching system if, you, if that is what you use today. Patches are welcome. Thank you.